Welcome back to the lesson A1.1. Today, it's a new lesson. It's similar to lesson A1. It's a new series of uh, lesson A1. We're moving forward to A1.1. The previous lesson that you have attended, the practices that you have been advised, I'm sure that you have, if you have practiced, you will benefit from it. Because everything that, whatever you practice, you, can, you will get the benefit. Uh, if you don't practice, of course, you will not get anything from it. So you must practice whichever advice you receive. So let's move forward <clears throat> from um, this point to straight to the lesson material. So you can see me here as well. So I can keep my picture on the side that you can see me as well and you can see all the uh, slide uh, text material along. So we will <clears throat> all know that the language we speak, we own our own words. So who owns the language? The language you speak right now, uh, right now, the language you speak, whichever language you speak, <clears throat> who owns it? If you speak the language, you own the whole language. You own your own words. Means that you own the language that you are speaking. So nobody owns any language. Nobody else owns the language you speak. If you speak that language, which are, whichever language you choose to speak, that is your language. Now, English is not my first language. English is my second language. My first language is Urdu, Urdu, which is uh, widely spoken in Pakistan. So in Pakistan, people speak Punjabi and Urdu. I can speak Punjabi and Urdu. So these both languages I can speak fluently as well as English. English is not my first language, but I do speak English, as you can hear that I have an accent and I have um, um, improved my skills and knowledge within the language. So that's mean that English became my own language. So whichever word I say, that's I own my words. So if I own my words means I own the language that I speak. So that's clear and simple. So I will help you to read through the slides that we will practice and understand and try to improve ourselves and we move forward together. So these slides are available um, for you to view as well as you can read by your own self. Um, you can hear me and you can read. So that will help you to um, understand more better if you are the person who understands by reading and if you're the person understands by listening. So you will develop almost both skills if you are new in English. So this channel is for those who can read, write, and understand up to the level of minimal, uh, minimum at least a little more higher than the beginners. If you're not a beginner, and if you can speak a little bit of English, you can understand a little bit, but you need uh, more, a little bit higher skills, a little bit higher knowledge about the language, um, you can uh, benefit from these uh, lectures. So the minimal level, minimum level to construct your sentence, these qualities that you can enhance through the practice. So due to the nature of um, um, advanced language and skills training, you are required to get a pen and a paper. So you need to have a notebook and a pen. The pen, for example, I have this pen, so you can see this pen is 
0 0.5 gel ink. The pointer, the nib, that normally the ball pen you can get. The small ball pen is 0 0.4, 0 0.5. I've used 0 0.4 as well, but 0 0.5 would be slightly more better, easy to read and easy to write. 0 0.4 is slightly more sharper. So the prior knowledge to have some uh, in writing, whatever you, you write, um, and however you can write on the paper. If you have writing skills, uh, if you haven't improved your writing skills, you need to improve your writing skills and practice um, and gain a benefit. Uh, when do you learn your first language? Have you studied grammar? So we have already discussed the uh, grammar issues in the previous uh, lesson. So I'm sure that you understand that grammar is not important. Your accent is more important than the grammar. You will learn the grammar if you uh, if you want to write a book or if you want to uh, proceed towards uh, higher education, if you want to produce some essays, uh, dissertations, uh, these types of work, then you have to pay more attention on grammars and spellings. So if you are just looking to improve um, uh, basic skills, then you don't have to pay too much attention on grammar. You just have to go with the flow and practice whatever comes into your mind. Just write, say things, and write it down on the paper. Uh, you will improve your grammar uh, automatically. So as long as you can understand the difference, as long as you make a sense within your sentence, you will be able to understand grammatical differences, you will be able to identify your own mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, you can't learn the grammar. So you'll have to make mistakes. So when you write different, different sentences, you will make a mistake. And that's when you will learn. So you will identify your own mistakes in your own writings. That's when you will learn the grammar. So if um, if you write, you will read the similar writing to your own self, and then you will determine whether your writings are making sense or not. So these are, uh, these are the key points that you can practice. You have to practice in order to correct your grammar and improve your skills. So let's move on to the next slide. Every lesson consists of several writing exercises. So whichever um, lesson you will attend after this and before this, the first lesson that you've seen already. And all lessons uh, come after this will consist of different, different writing exercises. So you'll have to uh, follow similar advice. You'll have to follow all those exercises and um, you have to practice writing. Um, and um, if you write, you will speak. Because a lot of people, of course, if you learn the language, you will have to be able to speak as well. You will have to be able to express your thoughts to other people. So if you really want to speak, you have to write. That is the only uh, way you have. That is the only option you have available. You must write if you want to speak. So that is simple and clear uh, advice for everybody. So how would you recognize the most important language? How would you recognize as You can read through the slide as well, and I will read it for you. Uh, this way you will understand uh, by listening and by reading by your own self. So I'm keeping it to the slow paced, slow paced communication, slow paced lessons, 
means that everybody can understand because a lot of people they expect to learn a b c they expect to learn a basic elementary level of language sport so basic elementary level of language sport is not available to uh, a higher level of students because you already know these rules you already know the language you already can understand and speak and read the language so this is why i'm speaking slightly more slower because you don't um you don't speak to the to the to the people who speak english fluently so you don't have an access um on regular basis that you would communicate to somebody who can speak english fluently so if i speak a little bit more faster you can't understand so that's why i'm keeping the lesson on slow paced the previous lesson was slightly more slower this is the reason that everybody can understand what i'm saying so let's move forward if we read through the slide first look at the purpose the language that you're learning you'll have to understand the purpose of your language whichever language you speak for example my language my mother tongue is punjabi and urdu so punjabi can be used in the village for for uh, ground field works like farmings there are lots of um, uh, other work that requires the person to understand and speak punjabi words if you don't use punjabi words you can't make sense so there has to be used that particular language for that particular work so every work has its own language so that language sets the rule to perform your own skills whatever you want to do that work requires you to speak that language so history interconnects two major purposes a sense of personal value and blocking other locals from development so it's not it is not development as you can read this word if you read in the normal sound is development if you read in the sound of a third person you will say development so it is not development it is development so it is one whole full word development so let's come back to the point history interconnects two major purposes a sense of personal value and blocking locals from development so which type of history interconnects these two purposes the blocking locals from development and the personal sense of values the personal sense of value that you live in different areas where the punjabi is being being spoken widely that is your personal value where you can understand other people and you can explain yourself to others and you can't move forward if you want to get an education you want to learn a different language there is there's certain set of rules in some regions where schools and uh, skill centers are not um, widely encouraged so highly educated people are discouraged from uh, delivering a uh, higher level of knowledge to uh certain regions uh, so that's why it's kind of blocking it's not they're not blocking they're not discouraging professionals from educating the uh, 
edu educating the people who don't have any, edu any education. They are just blocking local uneducated people from developing themselves. So there are two types of attacks are going into the different countries against different regions, against different people. So you'll have to understand this, where the things are actually going. Because if people learn more, they will think more. So if you learn more, you will be thinking more. And one day you will look for the right way forward. If you learn more, you practice more, you will learn more. And one day you will look for the right way forward. And the people will support you in the way of moving forward towards your future. So you all together will be able to identify the difference between the rights and wrongs. And you will be able to determine your brighter future. So these are the major points that you have to understand before, uh, beforehand and before uh, before you begin your first step, uh, before you start um, learning the language, before you start um, uh, learning the new knowledge that will benefit in the way of um, you, the way of the you looking for, the way that you want to design your own future. So these are the important. Let's move forward to the. Next, history of linguistic revelation and miraculous invention. So I'm just trying to bring a little bit more explanation today in this lesson, because I feel that everybody needs background, a uh, little bit more background and history of the, of the languages and how uh, languages work and what's the purpose of learning language and how can play the key part in your personal development and giving you uh, more advanced knowledge, skills and improving your, your life. And of course, you can use similar skills for your brighter, brighter future. So these informations you have to understand. This whole lecture, today's lecture, consists of the, the information attached to the rest of the lessons that you will receive. So this lesson is very important in that way because you are receiving full information, background information, and a purpose you will learn today. Okay. History of Linguistic Revelation and Miraculous Invention. So this is more um, um, valuable point that you will, you, you will understand today. I'll read it with you. For example, Urdu was used for poetry and dialogues. I read Urdu. I read several books in Urdu. Um, and I found majority of those books have been used with an explanation of poetry. So it also helped indigenous people, the people who live in that local region, to motivate them. So, so the language has been used for motivational purposes. So poetry been, has been used for motivational purposes. Indigenous people lived in that uh, same region where the poetry had been used widely. So it's been used for motivating people. So which represents a positive history attached to Urdu. So there are lots of um, uh, positive um, outcomes that we are enjoying today. So if you can speak uh, fluent Urdu, if you have learned Urdu's grammar, you'll be able to learn a different language grammar. 
But that does not mean that only you can learn. The person who had never learned Urdu can also learn and speak English because English is the easiest language. Today's world, in every single country, people are teaching English to the kids, to the children, because English is going to become an international business language. So this is the more important. That's why that makes the English language more important to every single person. So Arabic, there's a um, spiritual history attached to the Arabic language. So Arabic was intended, invented by um, the Prophet Hazrat Ismail. Ismail, peace be upon him. So Ismail alayhi salam, we say in, in Arabic. Um, so the Prophet Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam, that's a history attached to him. So how does that history attached? If you have read some of those historical books, um, if you read uh, some um, books written in Arabic, if you can understand Arabic language, even a lot of <clears throat> Arabic um, um, universities, um, big, big universities, they haven't uh, got that knowledge. They haven't got this information uh, that where the actually Arabic, Arabic language uh, are coming from. <clears throat> so a lot of people have forgotten this, uh, uh, this um, history, the, what, what the history is attached to it. Because <clears throat> these level of teachings haven't been uh, available to the new generation. So these, uh, this knowledge is only sleeping in the historical books. So you'll have to um, dig through the history of the language that how to, uh, what's the purpose, what's the language coming from, where the, where the language is coming from, what's the purpose of the language and who, <clears throat> who is the main person, who are the, um, who are the people actually um, designed the language, who are people actually involved to um, uh, promote the language through the poetry. So <clears throat> Arabic was invented by the Prophet Hazrat Ismail, peace be upon him, at the age of 10 years old. <clears throat> so these there are two uh, miracles are attached to Hazrat Ismail that as long as 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 long as I know some of these two uh, miracles. First is um, uh, Abi Zamzam and second is Arabic language. <clears throat> So these are two uh, uh, miracles that we all have to understand. The one miracle, which is Abe Zam Zam, that's a water um, that we drink when we go to Mecca, that is um, um, holy water that is naturally produced um, and it's been found under the mountain and is still there for years and years. Um, and um, everybody know this, uh, but not many people know that uh, Arabic language also uh, have been uh, revealed uh, on Hazrat Ismail. So Hazrat Ismail invented the language at the age of 10 years old and he started speaking from the 10 years old. At the age of 10 years, uh, he started speaking Arabic. And before the Arabic, before Arabic was introduced, before Hazrat Ismail people used Hebrew. Hebrew is um, the language that uh, Jewish people speak today. At that time, uh, everybody spoke Hebrew. We call it Ebrani. In uh, Pakistan, we say Ebrani, Ebrani language, Ebrani Zuban. So Hebrew language is attached. <clears throat> right now, it is attached to uh, Jewish people, but actually Hebrew uh, contains a lot of history, a lot of Islamic history. It's been written in Hebrew language as well. Uh, so it is important language for uh, Muslims as well. So because uh, the, the language is actually attached to Muslims as well. 
Um, so <clears throat> um, Arabic is the, um, of course, it's modern language. The language Arabic is the most modern language. It's been, um, it's been, um, it's been identified and uh, it's been found by all professionals in the world. It is used for resolving social issues, defining the law to crack the conduct of a human being, and providing signs of various divine revelations. It also regulates historical guidance to design our discipline. So what is your discipline? What is my discipline? So we learn from it from the revelation of the final book, Quran. So if you and the people who have actually read Quran have understood a little bit of it, they understand the importance of the language that we learn to move ourselves into the future. So you have to be able to share the information. If you use the language properly, you'll be able to share the information. And if you understand the language, if you have used language, you'll be able to understand. So you can understand the information that's been given to you. You will understand in, into the depth of the meanings of the information properly. So <clears throat> these are the uh, uh, major points that you, everybody have to understand and must understand this just to keep everything correct, not the corrupt, it's correct. So you'll have to focus on this correctness instead of corruptness. It's not corrupt, so it has to be correct. Let's move forward, vitally important to understand. <clears throat> I'll read out to you. The slide, in today's world, English is used in wider industrial sectors. Every subject you study will help to discover new words relevant to that field or the subject. So whichever, language, whichever subject you have studied, so every subject has been uh, attached to the language. So whatever you study, whichever school you go to, whichever university you go to, <clears throat> whichever subject you study, you study law, engineering, medical, business, economics, psychology, whatever you study today. Every subject has its own specific words attached to it. If you don't know those words, you don't know, you will not know anything about that subject. So that is clear. Everybody is supposed to understand this, and that is clear. So, such as Arabic is attached to social, cultural, religi religious explanations. But uh, English is attached to industrial. So that's the difference between English and Arabic. Arabic can define the law. Arabic can define social conduct, the human being's conduct. Yes. The, uh, Arabic can distinguish, uh, give you a distinct information about social developments. If you don't understand, the person uh, has to have um, an in-depth Arabic knowledge in order to understand the understand and develop and improve the social society, social cultures and the society. Um, uh, without that, it's in the, without Arabic, it's impossible. People keep on um, talking and talking and talking. They can't do nothing about the society. They can't improve the social culture. They can't improve, they can't define the law uh, up to the point where it gives um, uh, sufficient justification. So, <clears throat> so I, I'm trying not to use um, heavy words. I'm trying to use a little bit easy words that 
everybody can understand easily because heavy words are attached to the specific subject. So you don't want to um, uh, waste your time on that. So you'll have to keep on uh, basic communication. So this is the main, main major key part if you want to improve and develop your skills in that way. So every subject you study will help to discover new words. So you will, when you study uh, a business, you will discover the words actually actually has been used and um, um, and described the activity within the business. So those words you will discover. So if you read some psychological book, any psychology book, so any action, any activity has been described regarding psychology, you will find the words attached to that activity. So this is an uh, important point you'll have to keep in your mind that the words that you are going to use, you'll have to understand that these words are not actually attached to a different subject. For example, if you are going to uh, talk about the social and cultural, you can't use medical terms. <laughs> you can't use engineering terms. So this is, you'll have to understand because a lot of times the people um, in, in different countries, uh, people don't have, um, uh, that um, understanding that which word actually is going to be used in uh, which activity for what purpose. <clears throat> for example, a lot of people that try to use bigger words. It's like, um, um, for example, I've heard some people talk about uh, somebody's likes and dislikes. So if you're going to explain your likes and dislikes, it has to be used to your specific pinpointed likes and dislikes. You can't say desirable or undesirable because desirable, undesirable, that is legal word that you can't use for your likes and dislikes. So the, you'll have to understand that you must speak your simple language. Don't try to use those bigger words because those bigger words are attached to the specific subject. So use simple language. So this is the this is most important advice I can give you. Okay, we move forward similarly that you will understand, for example, so I've, the explanation I've given you, that similar explanation has been <clears throat> um, added on the same slide. If you move forward, for example, the law graduates are not able to understand engineering. <clears throat> so if you are studying engineering, you can't understand uh, solicitor's point of views. You can't un understand the laws um, and the mathematics. And if you're studying the law, you can't understand scientific formulas. So scientific, for example, um, scientific formulas can be uh, like a technical communication. Technical communication is um, uh, is the uh, regarding uh, any scientific uh, chemical related science. It's a technical language that has been used in the uh, chemical chemicals. So the uh, lawyers can't understand chemicals. He had never studied chemicals. So he can't understand that the technical language being used in the chemicals or technical language is used in engineering. So, so having a full knowledge of the English language will enable you to hold conversation and learn new knowledge independently. So <clears throat> you'll have to use your simple uh, conversations 
simple words that you used in the conversations. So you'll have to understand. Once you practice, when you, when, when you start using those simple words in your conversations, then you will be able to identify the space where you can fit those bigger words somewhere. So you will be able to use those bigger words when you practice using simple words in your conversations. When you start writing simple words, when you start practicing in writing simple words, you will be able to fit those words that you really want to use it. Uh, you preferred that you like to use those bigger words, you'll be able to find somewhere to fit those words in your sentence. Let's move forward. Do not write an, the exact word uh, that you've read in the book. So for example, whatever I'm reading from the, from the slide, uh, from the screen, I can't just keep on writing on the same same words um, in my paper. <clears throat> so if I've read what I've read from the book, I can't just write on the paper whatever, whatever is written into the book. So that is not a good idea because you will never learn, you will never be, you, that that's mean you are not using your own brain. If I open a book and whatever is written in the book and I start writing on a paper, that's mean I'm not using my own brain. I'm just, I'm just looking what is written uh, in the book. I'm just keep on writing on that. That does not make any sense. So don't do that, but write that point which you understand. Whatever you understand, you can write. If you don't understand, try to understand uh, the point, and that point you can write on the paper for yourself. The important advice is that in the situation of when not many people speaking fluent English in your surroundings, then the best way to practice is to use readings and writings. I'll read that again. In the situation of when not many people speaking fluent English in your surroundings, then the best way to practice is to use readings and writing. Best way to use readings and writings. Best way to use readings and writings. What you read, you must understand the point and write it on the paper about your understanding. You write on the paper about your understanding. Your understanding. What you understood, you write on the paper. Simple as that. Do not write the exact words you read, but write that point which you have understood. Do not copy and do not pretend to be parent speaker. For example, parent speaker means that whatever somebody said, you go out and say the similar way. <laughs> so that is, that's a parent speaker. So for example, if I say, um, um, if I say the important advice is to use this, and you go out and say, the important advice is to use this. So that's mean that you become a parrot speaker. So don't be a parrot speaker. Use your own sense, construct your own sentence and um, um, keep on re-paraphrasing your own thoughts. So you'll have to use your own thinking, use your own understandings and improve your own um, own way of communication. Move forward as we've learned whatever we have practiced um, um, in the previous lesson. 
So in the previous lesson, we have um, introduced ourselves, introduced family, occupationals, and so on, other uh, point of views that we have explained ourselves. So similar uh, models are brought here. Uh, these are, for example, how to introduce yourself. So here you will introduce yourself if you read and I'll read it with you here. So introducing yourself, for example, I'm, I'm Dean. I'm self-educated in law and philosophy. I have studied various books relevant to all parts of the profession. So whichever profession you do. I have practiced my skills and organized business independently. I have just joined the market and looking forward to respond multiple challenges. So in a previous lesson, I have uh, advised you to use action words first. So you can identify action words in every sentence. Here, I've just noticed that, just remembered that I should mention and help you to remember and understand this. So I am self-educated. So self-educated means you, you've read your own books by your own self, or you've bought, purchased books and you read by yourself, your own actions. Reading by yourself is your own action. If you more move forward to the next sentence, I have studied various books. So studied self-action, so your own action relevant to all parts of the profession. So you can see the rest of the sentence, there is no such action. So there is a one action in the beginning of the sentence. So I have studied one's action, and the rest of the whatever is connected to that action. So I have studied that action, various books relevant to all parts of the profession. So that completes your sentence, that makes sense. So you have to add your action word first in the beginning of the sentence, and then the rest of the words are connected to that action. So similarly, if you see the next sentence, I have practiced. Practiced is practicing is your action. So the rest of the words are attached to the, um, to the action word. So you see, I have practiced action, completed, I uh, practiced my skills and organized business independently. So complete sentence. That sentence makes sense because we have used action first. Similarly, I have just joined. Joining is your action. So I have just joined. I've just joined the market and looking forward to respond multiple challenges. So here you will see the action is being used in three um, in the three different uh, points because it makes three points in the same sentence. So whenever whenever you complete your point. It can be, the action word can be used multiple times in your sentence. If you are making multiple points. <clears throat> so there are three, three points in one sentence. You'll see one sentence, three points. I have just joined the market, one point. I've just joined the market, one point. And looking forward, to respond, looking forward is second point. To respond is third point. So you can see looking is action, respond is action, and joined is action. So how many actions are? Three actions. Means I have made three uh, points in one sentence. 
So I have just joined the market, one point, and looking forward, two point, to respond multiple challenges, so three points. So you have to understand these um, techniques. These are very important. Whenever you introduce yourself, whatever you say, whatever you construct, uh, any uh, anything you're talking about, anything you are trying to express your thoughts, um, you're trying to explain whatever, you'll have to make your points. So what follows your points? Your actions. <clears throat> your actions follow your points. So if you use your action words, you have to remember, you have to use action word in order to express your point. So when you use your action word, you are explaining your, your points. Action words, points, action words, points, action words, points. <clears throat> so let's move forward. Some of the questions by negative criticism. I'll read out to you. One, you have studied science, haven't you? Like you criticize somebody. A lot of people um, criticize negatively. Uh, you have to understand and not to uh, respond in, in the way of uh, negative energy, not in the way of negative, uh, negative thoughts. You'll have to understand others', other, others uh, point of view because some people, they are being critical because they want to benefit you. Some people are being critical because they don't know how to be a positively, uh, how to be critical in positive way. So if you can understand that this person doesn't know which word to use in order to be critical in positive way, then you can't say anything to that person. So you can't uh, object, you can't raise any uh, objection against him. <clears throat> so for example, if somebody wants to be rude to you and he's been critical in negative way, he will say, you have studied science, haven't you? So, if somebody say, haven't you, after the sentence, at the end, that's mean that person is trying to be slightly more critical, but in negative way, haven't you? So that's a question, but it's negative question. So positive question is different. Positive questions, um, when you ask somebody, <clears throat> that asking point comes before the sentence. Here, asking point is coming at the end. This asking point comes in the beginning of the sentence. That makes a positive. If I want to say positive way, if I want to criticize or ask question in a positive way, I will say, have you studied science? That is positive. Have you studied science? That is positive. And if I say, you have studied science, haven't you? That is negative. That is mean that the person criticizing you negatively, just because that person is trying to uh, put you down. So do you have studied science, haven't you? That's critical, that's negative. That's a bad way to communicate. If I say, have you studied science? So if I say, haven't you, that is bad. So next number two, didn't you read politics? I can only say, have you read politics? Have you read politics? Simple question. Have you read politics? Do you know this? Have you read politics? Do you know that? So that is positive questioning. So if I say, didn't you, didn't you, didn't you read, didn't you read politics? Huh? Didn't you, 
that is negative. So that's a bad way. Number three, you could get help for your business. So you can understand this question now. What is coming at the end of the sentence? Questioning style is coming at the end of the sentence. Questioning style, <clears throat> couldn't you? That's questioning style, which is negative. So if somebody say, if somebody say, you could get help for your business, couldn't you? That's a negative way. That's when when you want to criticize somebody. So if you don't want to, if you want to keep it simple, question, then you will say, could you get help for your business, or can you get help for your business, or even if you if you say that um, somebody have made a mistake while uh, running a shop and he couldn't manage his shop properly. So, and uh, in the result, he ended up to sell out his shop. And he goes to the friend and his friend says that you could get help for your business, couldn't you? So that means that he's trying to give him a little bit hard time. So number four, we should have joined the market long before, shouldn't we? So that is critical. If somebody wants to criticize, we should have joined the market long before, shouldn't we? So should have, we should have joined the market long before. That is simple. So critical answers, I haven't studied. You didn't read, you didn't read. I couldn't get help. We shouldn't join the market. I valued advice. I couldn't emphasize. Go forward. <clears throat> so these are critical answers. <clears throat> these are critical answers you can uh, design by yourself. You have to think, write uh, your answers the way you want to answer. You can write it down the way you want to. Uh, question somebody or you want somebody to question you the, how the question is supposed to be addressed question to address the question means that you set the sentence to set the sentence mean to address the question address mean to setting the sentence, making the sense in your question mean to address the question. Right, move forward. Introduce my friend. This is Sean. We have studied together in the same school. So you can see the action, where the, where the action is, where the rest of the words attached to it. So you have to remember this. You'll have to practice this. You have to write on the paper. If you don't write, you can't develop your skills. You must write in order to improve your skills, improve your communications. Okay. This is Sean. We have studied together in the same school. We both live in the same city, living is an action. But he lives on the other side of a different part of the city. So you can see he lives as an action on the other side of a different part of the city. So when I'll stop here for a second. <clears throat> uh, the people the students who are actually looking to improve the uh, communication skills in um, in speaking, uh, communication skills in uh, talking to, to somebody, communication skills in speaking to the public, or speaking to the single person, or more than one people, or more than few people. So there are different, different techniques to speak. 
So don't worry about this. Don't worry about speaking to one person or speaking to more people. Don't worry about this. You have to improve your uh, understanding and making a sensible point in your sentence first. Start writing down on the paper. Don't worry about speaking. You will learn. I will teach you um, in A1. I will try to adjust in some lessons in A1 so you will be able to improve that speaking skills as well. So make sure you follow that advice. Practice. If you don't practice, you will not learn. If you practice, you will learn. So move forward. Uh, so <clears throat> he achieved higher marks in subjects, in five subjects, and received the best remarks from the examiner. He is a responsible-minded and friendly-natured person. <clears throat> His social activity made him famous. He is well-known to local people as a good friend and a law-abiding citizen. He is well-known to local people as a good friend and a law-abiding citizen. So that's how you introduce your friend. So when you have to give personal character of your friend, for example, if somebody asked uh, your friend's reference, or your friend refer you to somebody else or to his employer or somebody that you give my personal reference, how would you give your friend's personal reference? So you'll have to understand a model that the way you construct your own thinking, your own thoughts about your friend to give his personal, his personal character, not your own personal character. Your own personal character is some, but something else. Your friend's personal character is something else. So your friend, friend's character are your character. You have to remember what is your character. <clears throat> so your character has to be separated on a side. So your friend's character has to be separated on a side. Your friend's character, uh, once you are giving a reference for your friend's personal character, you can't add your personal character in, um, in your friend's personal character. So you can't attach to it. You have to keep it separate. <clears throat> so let's move forward. He was influenced by optimist lecturers. Your friend, so you're talking about the friend's personal character. So you are saying, you're passing your, um, some information about your friend. So you're saying he was, or he is influenced by optimist lecturers and was or is career-oriented. Uh, career career is something else, career. So this is how you pronounce career. Career or carrier. In America, I think they pronounce carrier. I don't know, but here we pronounce career. Career-oriented. Career-oriented. Career. He is a fastest learner and his vast experience made him competitive in his field of work. <clears throat> vast experience means wider, more experience. Vast experience made him competitive in his field of work. He is an honest, approachable, and polite communicator. So here in writing, I can give you uh, a valuable tip. When you are um, writing and you want to mention uh, multiple points in your writing, so what you do, you can mention maximum three points in one sentence. Maximum three points. 
So, for example, you want to three points mean the three um, three items means item, not points. Three items you want to mention in your sentence. Three items. So, how do you um, separate that? Those three points can be understood by the other person, um, and um, and then and your sentence will make sense. How would you separate? How would you? What kind of um, um, uh, techniques that you would uh, use in in writing um, in the way that? you can separate your three points so what you do is so you have to add his three categories so honest approachable and polite so after the first category you place a comma after the second category you don't have to place a comma you just say and and say polite so you honest, approachable, and polite. So if you say honest, and then you put comma, approachable, then you put comma, and then polite, uh, then you say um, reading that line, reading that sentence will not make any sense because, um, because um, the fluency will be reduced, a natural fluency and natural readings, natural speaking, natural sense, and natural spirit will be reduced if you don't put end. So he is an honest, approachable, and polite communicator. Honest, approachable, and polite communicator. We find his advice useful and effective. So here just two, two categories. So if there are two categories, we don't have to use comma. So we just said and effective. We find his advice useful and effective because just two, you can use and effective. Here, there are three, honest, comma, approachable and polite communicate. So I hope you understand this. Let's move forward. Discussion model. So finally, the final slide, you'll have to understand this discussion model before we finish our lessons today. This is today's lesson. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'll read out to you. City, college, and company. So these are discussion models you'll have to use these um, in your practice. <clears throat> Make sure you complete your practice. Discussion model, city, college, company. I live in a small city. Everybody know each other well. My picture down so you can read. Here we go. I live in a small city. Everybody know each other well. There are few roads. The road closer to my home isn't what isn't wider enough for two cars so you'll have to understand if you are using sentence with three break breakings so we have broken down three sent uh, uh, three points in one sentence i live in a small city comma everybody know each other well so your point is completed comma there are a few roads. So full stop. So you say you made your three points and you did full stop. I live in a small city. Everybody know each other. Well, there are a few roads. Come on, the sentence completed. Next sentence. The road closer to my home isn't wider enough for two cars. So that's one sentence. So you have to understand the writing techniques um, and the sentence breaking technique that your words, your sentence makes sense. If your sentence does not make sense, 
then you have to worry in practicing more. So you have to understand this. <coughs> <clears throat> right, move on to college. My college is a few miles away from the house. There are few classes, but they, there isn't any playing ground. So here, the one mistake I have identified. Where's my cursor? Right, this comma should not be placed after but. It should be placed before but. So this comma goes here, before but. So when you want to say it's but in Urdu means the lakin. Lakin in Arabic is lakin as well, yani. So when you want to say that, it has to be uh, in writing, the comma should go before that. So my college is a few miles away from the house. There are few classes, but there isn't any playing ground. Company. I work in a privately owned company which is located within the vicinity of my accommodation. Therefore, it is easy to travel to work. Write your discussion on the paper. Vicinity, vicinity means that within the area within the similar area, like the one region, one city, the closer vicinity of the city. For example, one, there are different, different parts of the city. So <clears throat> you are living in Eastern part of the city, Western part of the city, Northern or uh, 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 East, North, South or North. Eastern, Western, Southern or Northern. So whichever part you're living in, so your part of the city, you can call within the vicinity of your accommodation. So that is vicinity. Or your street, or maybe um, in that street, maybe your uh, few street, that there's a one um, uh, blocks of flats, maybe, <clears throat> or, uh, or the one, um, 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 the big uh, big areas now <clears throat> nowadays uh, uh, the builders are building companies are designing different types of accommodations they build um, uh, 15 20 houses in one big massive block and that calls one one name so that is a uh, different uh, style of uh, uh, providing housing facilities to, to the people. So <clears throat> that's a vicinity of my accommodation. So write your discussion on the paper in the details about the city, college, and your company that you work for. You have to practice now. If you don't practice, that's your fault, not my fault. I've given you all the advice. So we will meet you in the next lesson. I'm sure that you will practice uh, and uh, look forward towards your brighter future. Plan ahead and I will come, I will come back with uh, more advice and more um, valuable uh, text material that you will benefit, inshallah.